For this sample, I'm going to use the Glyph FX uh, graphics library that comes with Rad Studio, Delphi, and C++ Builder. It's in the folder C colon program files x86 and Barcadero Studio 17 images Glyph FX. And it's as a zip file, so you need to unzip this. I unzipped it in this folder, but you can unzip it anywhere you want to. And in here, there's some great icons that you can use. So I'm using the PNGs, and here they are here. Really nice looking icons. Although I guess now the in style is the flat icons. I still like these arrow looking ones, but there's other flat icon libraries out there as well. But this is what I'm using today. So I've got a multi-device application here. And to get a T image list, I just go T image list and put it down on here. So this is the T image list editor. And it's a little more complex than the one that's with the VCL. So let me show you what we got going on here. We have the sources of images and then the list of images. The list of images is what you use outside of the image list. So these are the images that are available to be reused in other controls. Sources of images are images that you can use to make layers to be used in your image list of images. Now you can just come in here and add a uh, do do do. Let's see, we'll add a. Oops, let's go PNG here. So see, I added it down here at the bottom, and it added it in both places. So we automatically have it here, and it created a single layer image that we're using here. But can also come in here, and we'll say uh, search, and this brings up the multi-resolution image editor here, or multi-resolution bitmap editor. And I can go and let's get search. There we go. Search, and now I can actually have multiple resolutions of this exact one here. So I just come in here and go to 64 and go to search. And so this would be the two and this would be the one. Oops. One. Oh, uh, I can't duplicate it. So we'll make a four and one and two, okay. So, because this is 256, so it's twice as big as this one, so it's the two. So, that's one thing here is you can have, if you want to have uh, multi-resolution images, you do that from here. So, now I can take and make a new layer on here. So, let's make a new image down here. And on this one, I want to add a new layer. And I want the layer to be, oops, right here search arrow and we need to specify what the full image here so 256 256 and 256 six. all right so hopefully you can see this this has got the left arrow with the magnifying glass over it all right so let's go ahead and take a look at what we did here now the great way to, if you just want to pull an image out of an image list the best way is to use the glyph, the T glyph, T G L Y F. And the fact that it's glyph and glyph effects is a coincidence. You don't have to use glyph effects with the glyph. So let's go ahead and make this guy a little bigger here. And so this one has the images property. So we assign it to the T image list. And then we want to select which image we want. And we want to use the one I just created. So see, this one's a layered image. I can go and there's the regular one, and then here's the layered image. Okay, so that shows you how you can build a layered image. So we have two sources of images here, and then we've built two images that we're able to reuse. Now these two you don't reuse, you reuse these. And our search button, or search one, is a multi-resolution bitmap. Okay, this one here, it's multi-resolution, but we only specified one resolution. Uh, something else you can do here that's kind of interesting is this doesn't have to be the full image. You can actually specify 
um, part of it. Actually, let's make this 256. 256. So one thing you can do with these multi-resolution bitmaps is you can actually come in here and you can specify that you don't want to use the full thing. So let's make this the full size, 256. 256. Actually, I could have done that by, uh, say, sized by image as well. But when it's custom size, you can come in here and grab these resizable things here. And we can move it around and let's select part of the image. So see now, it's only selected part of that image. So if you had, for example, a sometimes you'll see this, you get one large image that has lots of images within it. You can just come in and select parts of those images out to use in your graphic. And so you can have a single source image here, but then your selected images that you're building out from that could be pieces of that larger image. Hopefully that makes sense. A couple things of note in here. If you want to preview it, that's this button here. And then you can specify the zoom on the preview, which is useful if you're dealing with multi-resolution images or of different densities, screen densities. This button here is kind of interesting. So right now you see it has this path to the image I was using. That's persisted, but when you don't want it to persist anymore, you just hit this button here. And that says I'm finished, but then also removes that. So if I go back in here again, we'll see that it's removed that uh, path in there, which is the design time only information. This one applies all changes and closes. This one fill all form file from file. So um, it allows you to grab a file and then it fills all of the of, up for you. This deletes a image from the multi-resolution image and this adds a new item. So if you wanted to add, which we already showed you that. Okay, uh, on here, this also clears all the design time information, so this clears it everywhere. Here we can reorder these guys here, which isn't as big a deal. On the images though, on the layers, we can actually reorder these layers, which you'll notice now the hourglass is behind it. So if we hit okay, not near as interesting, but you can't see the, I mean, I guess magnifying glass, not hourglass. Let's put that back on top. Uh, here's delete layers, add layers, list of images. So when you're adding images here, you want to, if you want to insert it in the middle, you select where you want it to insert, it inserts in the next one. If you want to put it at the end of the list, you hit there and we hit add. And so add's going to add whatever it was up here, but you can change what this one is by uh, coming over here and saying we want this to be a search one. So now I have search one there. And if we want to add another one, that's what I had selected. So I'll add the arrow. Now we have the arrow. We can delete this one here. Like so. If you do get confused, you go in here to the help. It actually will bring you right to the doc wiki page. Well, the help page based on the doc wiki page, which I will link to, that shows you how to use all of this. It actually includes a little video as well. So this exports list of images into a file. So we'll give this a shot here. Test. And if I go into Explore, Pictures. So this created a composite image for me here that has all of my images in it. So if you've gone through and created them, all of them, you could just export this out, re-import this back in, and then use the, the uh, sub-image selection, like I showed you earlier, to just select the part that you want. That's especially useful if you, for example, have layered some images and you want to build reuses in other apps without having to recreate the layering. Now, if you want to access the items from an image list in code, put down an image here, then I'll show you what you do here. You come in here and so, for example, this image doesn't have an images property. Okay, so you can't assign it to an image list and pull images from there. Uh, that's why you want to use the glyph if you just want to pull the images out. Um, but from code, we can come in here and say image one dot bitmap dot assign. And then we need to get the source. And so the source is going to be our image list one dot 
bitmap. And so bitmap is going to let us pull the bitmap out. When you give it the size, so this resizes the image we're pulling out of the image list to the size we want. And so I'm going to tell it I want it to be the size of image one dot size. And that's a control size. Now it's a uh, size record that I want. And then we tell it the uh, image index. So I'm going to go image zero. Let's now run this. And see it's pulled out image zero there. Let's go ahead and go with image one. Because I messed with image zero. There we go. It pulled it out for us. So that's all that's all there is to pulling out images in code. Most of the time, though, you're going to be using image lists for, um, like, for example, buttons. And we'll go down to the button. It has a images property. Set that. Come in here and select the image we want on the button. And now our button has a search, search glyph on it. A number of controls have the ability to do this. Just a matter of assigning it to the image list and then assigning the index. Typically, you're probably going to want to put your image lists on a data module, though. Add new. Data module. Let's take this guy. Cut. Paste. Use unit. And then we can come in here and select them from the data module. Like so. And that way you can maximize your imagery use across multiple forms with image lists.